Hello friends, let's see the question School of Geometry that is Code Chef Long Challenge Feb 2020. Let's see the problem statement and then understand it first. Then we'll go to its logic and finally its implementation in Python, C++ and Java language. Alright, the question is very simple and straightforward if you understand it. The question says, you are given two sequences, a1, a2, a3 till an and b1, b2, b3 till bn. You should choose the permutation through a to n and have to construct a rectangle with dimensions a1 into b, p1, a2 into b2, p2 and so on. So, we'll be discussing what is this actually in just few seconds. Here we have to find S in that S is the sum of maximum diameter of the inscribed circle in these rectangles. Well, let's see its input format first. The very first is T for test cases, then N which will be the length of next two line inputs. That is N space separated integers that is A1, A2 till AN and similarly N space separated integers for B1, B2 till BN. And simply its output will be, we have to print the maximum value of S, that is the maximum value of all the diameters of the inscribed circles. So we'll see its example in just few seconds. Let's see its constraints first. T will go till maximum 50, N can go till the maximum value of 10 raised to power 4, while this AI and BI can go till the maximum value of 10 raised to power 9 which is a very large number. So all we need is our complexity must be O of N. So let's understand the concept of inscribed circle first. So for each of the rectangles we have, we need to construct an inscribed circle. Inscribed basically means that circle must be completely contained inside the rectangle. Say the dimensions of this rectangle are 8 cross 3. So what would be the answer according to you? This one. No, because the circle must be completely contained with the maximum possible area and that is an important line. Well, this would not be there because it was not completely contained. But this is, yeah, this one is. This was also there and these one are also there. So there can be multiple inscribed circle like these ones. But none of them are of the maximum diameter. Okay. So that is nothing but the this one, which basically have the diameter as the shortest side of this rectangle that is 3. All right. So we can say that minimum of 8 and 3, that is 3, is the diameter of this particular circle. And in general, we can say the minimum of the length and width, that is the shortest side, which is known as width, would always be the diameter. So if I talk about these four rectangles, these would be the circles of the maximum diameter. So what we need to calculate, we have to calculate the S and S would be the sum of all the diameters of these rectangles. So let's understand it. How will we be doing that? Here we are given two arrays A with four elements and similarly B. We need to make all the possible combinations and then we need to find the maximum value of S. So our first task is to find all the pairs. That means all the pairs of 8 with 8, 15, 20, 3 and 5. Then this 8 with all the 4. Then this 10 with all 4 and similarly this 12 with all 4. Let's see how we will be doing that. This 8 cross 15. This is basically A1 into B P1. Then this 8 would be paired with 20. That is 8 cross 20. That would be known as A1 cross B P2. Then 8 with 3. That is 8 cross 3. A1 cross B P3. You might have noticed that I am always writing A1. Why? Because this 8 is being paired with all the values of B. Similarly, 8 cross 5 which is A1 cross B P4. Like this way, we have made all the pairs of A1. The same thing is to be repeated for this 8 that is A2. Then for A3, the 10 1. And 12 that is A4. So these are all the possible pairs that we'll get. Well, it is pretty forward to get that. Now comes the next task. Since n was equals to 4, we need to make 4 rectangles and then find s such that it must be maximum. So say the first rectangle is 8 cross 15. 
and since this is a rectangle and the minimum side is 8 that means the diameter would be 8 of the maximum inscribed circle. So the next pair would be 8 cross 20. I am just taking an example that let's take such pairs then what would be the minimum side 8 that means the maximum diameter. The next pair let's say the next pair is 10 cross 3. The minimum side is 3 and this would be the diameter and for 12 cross 5, 5 would be the diameter. And if I add these values like 8 plus 8 plus 3 plus 5, I'll get the answer as 24, which is actually the sum. But we need to find the maximum value of this sum. And what would it be? Let's take some other examples as well. Let's do one thing. Let's pair this 8 with this 3. What would be the minimum side among these two? It would be 3. So let's take the next pair as this 8 and this 5. So as per you, what would be the diameter? Obviously, that would be 5 because that is the smallest size. Similarly, for 10 and 15, we would have 10. And for 12 and 20, we would have 12. So you might have noted that I am always disappearing those values. And why is it so? The only reason behind it is we need not use the same pair again and again. So that's why I was disappearing that. So what is going on here? Now we have to add these values like 3 plus 5 plus 10 plus 12 and the answer would be 30. And that is the maximum possible sum of this possible combinations. So you can try it out. You just trace it on your pen paper. If you find anything greater than 30, well, it would not be there. So these were the four pairs that we used to find the maximum sum. We'll just pause the video for a second and trace this yourself. I think how we'll be doing that, make a general formula for that. Okay, so let's see. Let's first consider the second case. And the second case says that we have to take the two arrays. That is, the first array is like this and the second one is this. Here you can see one thing. A1 is equal to A2 is equal to 20. Like this, all the three values are equal to 20 and similarly, B1 is equal to B2 and equal to B3, that is 10. That means all the values are equal. So the possible combinations would be only these three, that is 20 into 10, 20 into 10 and 20 into 10. And each time the shortest side is 10. So we can simply say the sum is equal to 30. So, well, it was pretty easy case when we have all the values equal. But what if, if we take the first case when the values were not equal? So, what would we do in such cases? All you need to do is just to sort the, these two array and you will find these results after sorting. Now, the second task is, well, this is A and this is B and these are the indices that you can see from 0 to 3. Our next task was to take everyone like 0th index for a and b that is 8 and 3 minimum would be 3 similarly next for 8 and 5 the minimum would be 5 for 10 and 15 the minimum would be 10 and for 12 and 20 the minimum would be 12 now some students ask how will this strike in our mind that we have to take the sorted ones the reason is earlier this 3 and 5 were being taken with 10 and 12 since this 10 and 12 is there in when we have to find the maximum one but here we these were being rejected because three and five were the smaller one so why not to reject the smaller ones with the smaller one that's why three was with eight and five was also with eight so that eight and eight are being rejected here 15 and 20 are being rejected and finally the output would be 30. so this was the small thing that you must see how to make the logic well, this is the maximum possible sum. Okay, so let's say its answer in Python, C++ and Java language. The very first is the Python code. Here the first task is to take the input for T, the test cases, then the loop for number of test cases. Simply next was we need to find N. The next task was we have to take N space separated values for A1, A2 till AN and similarly for B1, B2 till BN. So for this you need to do two things. So this can be done in two possible ways. Either using list comprehension or using this math function where I have used the math function where I am just splitting the values and mapping it into a list by converting it into integers. And side by side I have also sorted them. That's why the input was already sorted. 
well you can do this two steps in different lines itself that is completely up to your choice what was the next task these are the sorted inputs that we have already received what we need to do we have to find which one is the smaller one and we have to add it into s that is the sum so here i have used a loop for j in a range and j is basically these indexes from 0 to 3 and i am comparing a of j and a of b of j that means which one will be the smaller i will add them to the sum so here if a of j is smaller then i will add a of j to the sum while if b of j is smaller that means the else part i will be adding the b of j to the sum like in this particular question b of j that means 3 was smaller in this one 5 was smaller again b of j is being added here 10 was smaller that means a of j was being added and similarly 12 that means a of j and finally the sum would be 30 and so finally after this loop we have printed our sum well this was the pretty simple logic in python language let's see its logic in c++ and java also well this is the c++ code here the very first task was to take the input test cases next comes the declarations well you have seen that in python it is a dynamically typed language and there we do not need to specify the data type but here we need to since ai and bi can go till 10 raised to power 9 so we need to take long long which i'll be using as ll as you can see here so this was the only concept you must know in c++ we would be using long long while in java we would be using long itself the next task was to take the input for a and b so in c++ a simple loop can be used then we need to sort that for that i'll just use a direct sort function and we have to add the minimum of the two values and then add it to the sum so here i am using the minimum function itself this is basic pretty simple and finally i would be uh, printing the output so this was the c++ code let's see the java code also so the very first task was to take the input test cases then all the declarations while using new you can also allocate the memory itself then input a and b sort them again a direct sort function is being used and finally minimum for finding the minimum of two and adding it to the sum and finally printing it so you can see here also we have used long so this was the basic logic and the implementation in python c and java language so friends this was the question that we have already studied the school of geometry so you can see the complete question here itself Let's submit the code that we have seen on, in our slides. So the very first, let's see the code for C++. So this is the same code that we have studied there itself in the presentation. Let's submit it. And you can see here, that the result is absolutely correct. So well, this is the Java one and the same logic that we have used. Let's submit it again. And yes, it is also working perfectly. So the last program that is Python, let's submit it as well. And yes, it is also perfectly working. So this was all about this question.